Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.8. Relate multiplication to division. Please pause and write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to use multiplication to solve division problems. Please pause again to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Today's lesson has a vocabulary word. The vocabulary word is inverse operations. An inverse operation is the operation that reverses the effect of another. So for example, the opposite of adding is subtracting, as shown over here. And the opposite of multiplying is dividing, as shown over here. Please pause to write the lesson vocabulary and definition in your notebook. Let's continue our lesson by starting with the unlock the problem. It says, Joel and five friends collected 126 marbles. They shared the marbles equally. How many marbles will each person get? Let's begin by underlining the problem. It says, how many marbles will each person get? The word each in this question tells me something good, but it doesn't tell me to multiply this time because up above it says that they're going to share the marbles equally. That tells me that I need to divide. The last thing that we need to know is our numbers. We have 126 marbles and Joel and five friends. So that means we have six people. Let's start with the blue box to fill in some information. It says underline the dividend. The dividend is the big number we're going to divide into. We circled it. That number is 126. And then it says, what is the divisor? The divisor is what we're going to divide by. We said Joel and five friends, so the divisor is six. So the problem that we're going to be solving is 126 divided by six. In order to solve this problem, we're gonna use some multiplication to solve a division problem. We know that multiplication and division are inverse operations. They undo each other. So we can use one to solve the other. The first way we can do it is by making a picture or an array. It says, outline a rectangular array on the model with 126 squares arranged in six rows of the same length. Shade each row a different color. Before I start drawing, let's do some math to know about how long each row should be. So let's start with a standard division, 126 divided by six. Six goes into 12 two times. Six times two is 12, subtract, no remainder, bring down the six. Six goes into six one time, which is six, subtract, no remainder. So our rows should be 21 cubes long. Let's draw that picture. We're gonna start at the corner and go all the way to the other corner, leaving an empty box on each side. That is 21 cubes long. We're also going to go down six rows because he's going to divide by six friends. Finish off your rectangle. This rectangle now has 126 cubes inside. We're going to divide it by six, and the way we're going to divide it is by each row. So let's draw straight across the row, and it says we're going to color each section in in a different color. So this one's going to be blue. Okay, now our next section is going to be red. If you don't have a color pencil, you can just label them. This one is Joel, and this one is a friend. Let's continue, let's draw our next one. This is another friend.
Here's another friend. I'm running out of colors. I'm going to have to go to black. That's another friend. And then I'm going to go back to blue. And this is another friend. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five friends and Joel. So six people. That's what we wanted. And each person has 21 in their row. So each row has 21 squares that are shaded. We can use this ray to show that six times 21 is 126, which is our first math fact here, six times 21. So that means if six times 21 is 126, then 126 divided by six is 21. So each one of the friends is going to get 21 marbles. Another way to divide using inverse operations, multiplication, and division is using the distributive property. We've talked about the distributive property before. It means to pass something out. So in this example, we're going to divide 52 by 4. Let's read our directions. You can use the distributive property and an area model to show a division problem. Remember that the distributive property states that multiplying a sum is the same as multiplying each addend by the sum and then adding the products together. So in this example, we have 52 divided by 4 equals a box. So that must mean that 4 times the box equals 52. In order to solve that problem, let's break our numbers up into easy pieces. We're going to break 52 up into 40 and 12. And there's a reason we picked 40 and 12 instead of 50 and 2. And that's because we're dividing by the number 4. If we were to divide the number 2 by 4, we would get a fraction, and that wouldn't be helpful. So we picked the number 40 because it's divisible by 4, and 12 because it's divisible by 4. Now we can divide each part by 4 and then add the two parts together. So we're going to do 40 plus 12 equals 52. Now we're going to divide 4 times, how do I get 40? 4 times 10 is 40. And 12, how do I get 12? Four, 3 times 4 is 12. So now I'm going to take those two parts and add them together. 10 plus 3 is 13. So 4 times 13 is 52. So then 52 divided by 4 equals 13. Let's divide on the side to check. 52 divided by 4. 4 goes into 5 one time, which is 4, remainder 1. Bring down the 2. 4 goes into 12 three times, which is 12, subtract, no remainder. So our answer is 13. So we get the same answer. I know at first the distributive property might seem a little bit strange to you, but after we practice, you'll see that it's a great way to divide. All right, fifth graders, it's time for our lesson activity. Today's lesson activity says to fill in the blanks to solve. You're going to divide the number 80 by 5. I'll help you get started. We're going to split 80 into two numbers that can be divided by 5. So if we divide it into 80 and 0, that wouldn't work. So we're going to pull out a 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So if I had 80 and I've pulled out 30, that means that I'm left with 50, which is going to help us fill in that first blank. 5 times what gives us 50? Add those two parts together to solve the problem. You can also do a standard division to check your work. Remember that this work needs to be done in your math notebook and ready to show your teacher. Great job on your flip lesson.